The Saab ES39 Gripen is unique in many aspects. It was never supposed to be built. It is the smallest and the lightest of modern Delta canards. It is also the simplest and the cheapest of all of them. And it can be purchased in flat packs. Welcome to Millennium 7 Star, the channel that helps you make sense of military history and military technology. Please stay with me till the end, because the stuff that we are discussing are very hard to find anywhere else on YouTube. The sub vegan that was the backbone of the Swedish Air Force in the 70s had a dark side. At some point, it absorbed 40% of the Swedish military balance, and it was deemed to be, well, simply too expensive. In fact, the Riksdag, Swedish parliament, voted a bill that there was not going to be another entirely Swedish combat aircraft. So, in 1978, when the Swedish Air Force started examining the possibility of a successor, politicians went mad. First, it was asked that the plane had to have a clearly defensive focus and it had to be managed within the Swedish system, made of very few professional forces and small bases dispersed in the country. Second, politics realized the implication of buying a foreign plane that was losing a large portion of the 20,000 highly specialized jobs in the military aerospace industry. So, the Defence Committee submitted three alternatives to the Riksdag. A new Swedish plane, a foreign plane built in Sweden, suggesting the F-16 or the F-18, or the direct purchase of a foreign plane. To further complicate the situation, the Swedish Air Force was considering uh, the idea uh, of adopting different planes for different missions, rather than a single multi-role platform. And when Saab in 1980 presented a proposal for the Gripen, which was a multi-role modern platform, the Air Force was against it. At this point, the future of the program was in jeopardy and the total cancellation was a concrete possibility. A tough political battle developed, but at the end, in 1982, the parliament decided to develop a Swedish multi-role aircraft with just 176 yes and 167 no. The hemorrhaging of foreign currency reserves required to buy an American fighter and the impact on Swedish jobs tilted the scale in favor of a Swedish solution. The Gripen is the smallest and the lightest of the modern Delta Knarts. It is the simplest to operate and the cheapest per flight hour. It is estimated to cost one half of the F-16's cost per flight hour. This is a direct consequence of the particular requirements of the Swedish Air Force and the Swedish government. Having a single engine plane helps containing the costs, but it limits the size and weight of the plane itself because the heavier the plane, the worse is the dynamic performance and nobody wants to go below certain thresholds. And a small plane also is simple to operate from the dispersed runaways that are integral to the Swedish air defense system. In Sweden, actually, it is given for granted that the air bases will be attacked. So, single planes are supposed to operate from modified motorway sections uh, disseminated all around the Swedish territory. The attacking force needs to pick them one by one to neutralize the Swedish air force. And to make this plan work, it is necessary that the aircraft would require only a skeletal maintenance. While deployed on dispersal sites, a single aircraft can be taken care by a team of one NCO and just four recruits. The turnaround time is between 10 and 15 minutes, and potentially many dozens of missions can be flown before there is any need of any maintenance that can't be executed on the field. And even in this case, the Swedish prefer having itinerant workshops rather than concentrating the planes in an airbase again. A quick description of the aircraft itself is made difficult by the fact that, despite the relatively low numbers produced so far, I mean less than 300, 
The Gripen has been developed in numerous versions and the double seat versions are not simply trainer planes but they are designed for specific combat missions. Actually double seaters are expected to operate in command and control roles or in uh, electronic warfare missions. Also, the current E and F versions have been radically improved and basically they just look similar from the outside to the previous ones while being almost a new plane. So the empty weight is in the region of 7000 kilos for versions from A to D and around 8000 kilos for the E and F versions. The maximum takeoff weights are for the AB about 12 tons for CD about 14 tons and for EF about 16.5 tons. This speaks volumes of the capability of the design to accept improvements and to grow in weight without excessive penalization. However, despite the increase, even the EF version is about 20% lighter than the Eurofighter and the Rafale. And if you look at the Gripen while it is parked on the flight line, it looks small if compared with the other modern planes. It is less than 15 meters in length and it is 8.5 meters in wingspan and Rafale and Typhoon are about a meter longer, but their wingspan is around 11 meters and they are one meter taller than the Gripen. One of the consequences of being small is the relatively shorter range if compared to the major competitors, uh, which is something that has been partially corrected in the latest EF version. Versions A to D use the Volvo RN12 engine, which is a derivation from the American General Electric 404 with 54 kN thrust. EF versions use the General Electric 4104, a variant of the engine of the Super Hornet with a thrust of 58 kN. It is not to be excluded that Volvo will produce an indigenous engine in the same class at some point in the future. The thrust to weight ratio is worse than the other modern European Delta Knarts, but we will see that this is not as penalizing as it may seem. The aerodynamic configuration is Delta Canard because in conjunction with fly-by-wire and relaxed stability, this configuration features a lower drag and a better maneuverability than the classic configuration with the tail. If you are interested, there is an entire playlist explaining why it is so. The Gripen, though, brought this one step forward. If you look at the back of the Gripen's fuselage, from above but most notably from the side, you might notice that it is tapered to hug the engine nozzle. This may seem trivial, but the tail cone is an essential component to reduce the overall drag of a plane. Civilian or transport planes often have rather elongated tail cones, not only to avoid tail strikes, but also to reduce the fuselage drag. It is possible to understand intuitively why it is so. The air separates when it encounters the fuselage in a similar way as it does with the wings. It flows along the side of the plane at a higher speed than the free flow, only to reunite at the tail of the fuselage. Since the speed is higher than the free flow, the static pressure on the fuselage side is lower than the free flow pressure. If the fuselage terminates abruptly with the engine nozzle, the air will be just sucked away by the engine exhaust, reducing even more the pressure, and there is nothing but hot gas to exert the pressure against. But if the fuselage is tapered toward the nozzle, the flow gradually slows down and increases in pressure, and part of that pressure is directed forward. This is a force against the drag that is usually accounted as a reduced drag. In the case of the Gripen, we know very unofficially that the accurate design of the tail section of the fuselage has reduced the fuselage, just the fuselage drag, by almost 15%, if compared with a stride design like it was on the Viggen. If you consider that the overall aerodynamic design is rather clean, it is easy to believe that the low drag can help compensate the low thrust to weight ratio when it comes to acceleration and top speed. 
in fact, and quite surprisingly, in a complete air to air configuration with one external drop tank, the plane can supercruise at Mach 1.1. The low wing load also gives the plane some excellent roll rate, contributing to a performance more than acceptable in a modern environment. We have reports of Eurofighter pilots stating that in an energy based combat, the Gripen is a relatively easy prey. But the small fighter that comes from the cold has other resources that we haven't talked about yet. We are going to open this flat pack in the next video. So if you found this video interesting, I'm sure you will be interested in the videos that are going to appear beside me. In the meanwhile, please like, dislike, subscribe to the channel and hit the bell so you won't miss anything. And if you could consider supporting the channel on Subscribestar and Patreon, well, that would be amazing. Thank you very much for watching and goodbye.